Hey everyone, you're with Tesla Tom here. Thanks so much for joining us on Ludicrous Feed. We're going to go for another drive today, this time in North Sydney CBD. We're going to test out the full self driving visualization on version 2020.12.11.1. Make sure you enable this on your autopilot settings, guys, if you want to use uh, full self driving visualizations where we get to see traffic lights and rubbish bins and lane markings and stop signs, all those wonderful things. Let's go for a drive right now. All right, guys, so we are in North Sydney currently. Uh, we're going to just uh, pick up a few full, full self-driving visualizations and just straight away there's a test for us there. There's a uh, traffic light ahead there with a stop sign next to it. And uh, I guess that'll be something for Tesla to sort out so that it knows, well the car knows which one to obey. Because that stop sign is for basically to tell drivers that when signals are blacked out to stop. But generally we have to obey the, the, the traffic light obviously. So uh, you'll see, it's funny how that uh, little arrow there on the screen, for some reason, even though the traffic light itself is red, all right, so it's turned green, there's that stop sign you can see there, some pedestrians on the screen, that line there is the intersection line, so I assume that's what the car is going to use one day to determine where to stop if it's the first car to light. I'm assuming in time it'll pick up school zone signs and other speed limit signs as well to help the car decide what speed to go at. The car does um, have something called shadow mode, which is what Tesla uses to, I guess, predict what it would do and then compare it to what we would do as humans. Um, and I guess that's, that's how the, the car learns or the neural net learns over time. And that's something the car company Tesla will use to uh, present to regulators uh, and governments around the world to say, look, we're actually pretty accurate with what humans would do in the situation. So uh, it's important to send this data to Tesla, if you're driving a Tesla, to help promote the use of um, autonomous driving one day. So for now, um, you know, the car does see a lot more in the background, not just traffic lights, cones and stop signs, uh, but this is kind of like a preview for what the car can do. Some more traffic lights there. So I saw a bicycle sign on the road. So we're heading into uh, North Sydney CBD right now. A bit quieter than usual, obviously, with uh, the COVID restrictions. Okay, so we're going to drive and turn left. Some more cones there. Some more traffic lights. I'm going to turn left into Blue Street. Again, the intersection line there. Let's indicate left. It's not picking up the um, pedestrian signals, which I assume it'll do one day. Up the cone on the right. It was picking up rubbish bins uh, on my previous drive and like even stationary rubbish, rubbish bins. Hasn't picked up post boxes. Got some on the left there. Maybe in a future update. Okay, what we'll do now is swing back up Pacific Highway. There you go, there's a, a stop sign, even though it's attached to a traffic light. You see how that that one's indicating green. That's actually the traffic light on the other side for the cross street. So yeah, that's that'll be something that um, it's going to be sorted out, I guess. Because you don't want the car obviously following the wrong traffic light when they're in close proximity to each other. That's fairly accurate cones. They're not cones, but they're safety markers. Again, that stop sign is attached to the traffic light there. Okay, cyclist coming up there. There we go, you can see it on the screen now. Indicate left. Just waiting for pedestrians. Might just go in this lane here on the right. Okay, here we go. What I'll do now is indicate right here, some lane markings on the ground. It's good to know. 
one day when it reacts to it. Now, here's a double row of traffic lights, which the car's not picking up. It's going amber, but still presents as a single row here. So again, that's something that's going to be sorted out for the next update. Now, am I actually over the line? I don't think so. If, if I am, it's only just, but the car is saying that I'm over the, over the line there, intersection line. Okay, see that, that light there is blacked out. Again, yeah, double row of traffic lights, something that uh, Tesla has to look at. Not sure they have those in America, but certainly here, we have a lot of those double rows. So that car next to me is actually a ute. There you go, just turned into a ute. Okay, so we're turning right now. What we'll do is we'll keep going up Miller Street. Actually, what we could do here is turn right. Yes, I'll turn right here. And also another thing is that a lot of our lights have that, see that red arrow disappeared on the light up there, which means that you can turn right safely. Again, that's something that um, Tesla's got to work out too. When the red light disappears, you can turn right. Same with the left as well. Okay, so what we'll do now is um, head onto that freeway bit. See one, two, three, four, five set of lights. One, two, three, four. Yeah, there's only four lights there. And interestingly, see that lights on the right there. There's actually four lights. Uh, not picking that up. It's just picking up as three. Again, that's got to be something that's to be sorted out. Something unique, possibly, to our environment here. All right, we're going to indicate left to go a bit more north on the freeway. I won't use autopilot for the time being because I'm going to exit pretty quickly onto Falcon Street to just drive around Crow's Nest just to give you a bit more of a feel of an urban environment. Okay, so back in this left lane here. Falcon Street here. More traffic lights. Yeah, pretty responsive there. Turned amber and then the screen turned amber almost instantaneously. Yeah, I suppose I could have gone on Miller Street, but just for a change. Show you guys something a bit different. Okay, let's turn right onto Miller Street here. Again, some more right arrows on the ground. A straight arrow for a sec, there it is, and then it turned into a right arrow. Okay, just at the intersection line. See these school zones here? It's pretty cool, the bicycle there turning with me. Um, so these school zones are 40 kilometers an hour at 2.30. And again, that's something that needs to be uh, sorted as well once we get into full self-driving mode. That the car will obey according to time of day, not just time of day, but time of year as well, uh, you know, it's going to follow the school holidays and term times, if not always 40, depends on whether it's school holidays or not. 
Okay, we're going to turn right now, back onto Miller Street. We're kind of in Crow's Nest now. Just going to go into the Crow's Nest area, show you a bit more, a bit more full self-driving things. Okay, Ernest Street. Yep, that looks like a good place to turn. Rubbish bins, I think we saw there. More traffic lights. Haven't seen a bus lane yet. I did do a video yesterday or the day before, which didn't pick up the bus lane sign in the Sydney CBD, it just showed it as a stop sign on the ground. So something to be worked out for the next update as well. There's a no entry sign up ahead there uh, with the red light. So again, hopefully we'll pick up those kind of signs in the next update. The car will know not to go in there. Okay, let's indicate right. See that nice arrows there on the ground? A few more people out and about enjoying the sunshine today, which is nice. So we're on Alexander Street coming up. And I'll just do a bit of a drive around Crow's Nest. Now, this is something that's got to be done up next time too, which is the pedestrian crossing. It's, it's potentially a very serious issue, because in Australia, at least, generally speaking, the rule is to give way to pedestrians. Uh, and don't, certainly don't um, queue across it. So, well, roundabouts too. Roundabouts, about it. roundabouts would be something interesting to look into for the next, hopefully the next few updates. Uh, Elon Musk has tweeted that uh, roundabouts are easy, apparently. From what I've seen, uh, autopilot roundabout is not fun. It certainly hits it a bit too quickly. and uh, doesn't take the, the round or the curve of the roundabout very well. And if it's any higher than 10, 20 centimetres, it'll do some serious damage to the car. So that's something to look forward to. A lot more delivery drivers around, understandable. Okay, so this is kind of the, the main drag. Now you see how I'm stopping for this cyclist here, this delivery cyclist. Something that future updates will have to do. sure they've got all this in shadow mode and it's learning as we go okay so uh, this is crow's nest let's do a little bit more driving around crow's nest and then we'll finish up Whoop. the car's trying to duck out there okay and then I'm gonna turn left here I'll show you a bit of um, the St. Leonard's up here too interesting around here. There's a stop sign ahead. See, we don't have a lot of stop signs just by itself. But uh, that picked up pretty clearly there. Stop, one, two, three. And uh, into St. Leonard's now. Bit quiet around here. Again, there's a no entry sign. Don't think it's picking up give way signs just yet. Let's have a look. And another pedestrian crossing here. Yeah, no give way signs as yet. So that's something for the next update, I would hope. Stop sign ahead there. Alrighty guys, well, uh, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed that. Little tour of uh, the Lower North Shore in Sydney. 
just uh, on version 2020.11, sorry, 2020.12.11.1 in our Tesla Model 3 performance, showing you full self-driving visualizations. Stay safe, guys. Uh, take care of yourselves. Don't forget, you'll never charge alone. I'll see you next time.